In this video, I'll explain high availability admission control. Now, the purpose of admission control is to ensure that vSphere high availability has enough spare resources to accommodate the failure of one or more ESXi hosts. And when we have a host failure with HA, all of the VMs that were running on that host will fail and they'll get booted up on other hosts within that cluster. So as these VMs that are failed up get restarted on these other hosts, we're going to use admission control to ensure that those hosts that still remain have enough spare resources to adequately run those virtual machines. It also makes sure that virtual machines with reservations will be able to boot. Now, if a virtual machine has a reservation, that means that that VM is guaranteed a certain amount of resources. And if those resources are not available, the VM won't be able to boot. So again, high availability admission control is going to help us ensure that if an HA event occurs, every single virtual machine ends up booting up. So here we see a cluster of ESXi hosts and on each of these ESXi hosts, we're utilizing about 80% of the memory or CPU, right? And if one of these hosts now fails, there's not enough spare capacity on the surviving hosts to adequately run those virtual machines. Therefore, we need something like admission control to kind of place some limits on these hosts and ensure that we don't run so many VMs that we can't tolerate a failure. Now, if an ESXi host fails, we have enough spare capacity to boot those virtual machines up on the surviving hosts. So here we see the first admission control policy that we can choose from, which is called host failures that cluster tolerates. This is a very common choice, but it's not as simple as it sounds, and it's often misunderstood. So let's take a look at how this method works. The first step is to calculate the slot size, which is based on the largest CPU and memory reservations of any virtual machine in the cluster. So here we see VM1 with a one gig memory reservation and VM2 with a 500 megahertz CPU reservation. And those two virtual machines combine to form our slot size. So now we know how big the biggest VM can possibly be. And the next step is to determine how many slots can run on each of our hosts. So all of our hosts in this case support the same number of slots. And let's assume that high availability is configured to tolerate a single host failure. That means we need to set aside five slots as spare capacity. Now let's say that we have a large virtual machine. See on the left, VM1 now has a four gig memory reservation. Well, that's going to contribute to a larger slot size. And that's gonna skew the number of slots that are available per host. Right now I can only power on two virtual machines per host. And let's not forget, we need to set aside one host's worth of resources for failover. So now my cluster has the same hardware, but because my slot size is larger, I can run less virtual machines. Right. So in this slide here, notice we now have four usable slots. Let's say that because we can't power on many VMs, we decide, hey, let's take host ESXi03 and double the memory and double the CPU. Right. So now host ESXi03 has way more resources than it had before. And we still have the four gig memory reservation on VM1 on the left and a 500 megahertz CPU reservation and the VM2 on the right. So our slot size remains unchanged but now our cluster as a whole can run a total of eight slots. So we're hoping, hey, look, we're gonna have more than four usable slots this time around. Well, no, no such luck because we need to account for a failure of the largest host. Therefore, four slots have to be reserved for failover. And we end up again with four usable slots just like we had before the memory and the CPU upgrade. Right, so this method can be a little tricky.
And when people can't boot up their virtual machines, they tend to turn off admission control, which is a bad thing. So there's a few things you can do. Number one, you can manually configure the slot size, or you could simply configure a percentage of resources that admission control reserves. No tricky slot sizes here. It's just a simple percentage that says, hey, we're going to reserve 25% of resources for failover. Well, then on all of these hosts, you know, 36 gigs out of 48 will be usable. This is a really simple way to do this. And if we say, hey, let's take that fourth host and give it more resources, right? Double the memory. Well, now we're going to actually get something out of doubling the memory of that host. Right? We're going to get double the amount of usable memory because we're using a simple percentage. Right? And this also helps just reduce the odds that somebody's going to just turn off admission control because they can't boot up a VM. The final admission control method you can utilize is by specifying a failover host. This is like setting aside one host just for failover. No VMs run on this host. It's simply spare capacity. 